Hello, 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 everybody. I danced last time and I don't know why it's a thing again this week, but here we are. Happy Talk Tuesday. It's your girl Ashley, the amateur expert, coming to you live for this episode of Talk Tuesday. I already said that, but that's what it is. We've got to come up with a different name, but it's working for us now. If this is your first time joining us, so welcome. I'm super excited to have you. We'll be talking to my friend, my coworker, my girl, Asha Hornaday, and we're going to talk to her about her career path, her ideas of success, and her tips and motivators. Hey, mom, I see you, girl. Hey, Jalen, I see you. And hello to everyone who is joining us. Asha is with us, so I'm going to add her so we can jump right in. Happy Talk Tuesday. Waving hello, hey, 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 happy talk to you. Hi, yeah. happy talk to <laughs> Thank you for having me. Of course, thank you for being here. I'm super excited to have you with us so we can talk about your career path and all of the things, Asha Hornaday. I feel so it's going to be a big thing. It's a moment. I'm already feeling good vibes. <laughs> I'm already feeling good vibes. I am too. Okay, so let's get started. Tell us a little bit about you. Who are you and um, what are you doing currently for work? So um, my name is Asha. I am <laughs> I am a business owner. I am I'm born and raised in St. Louis. I feel like that's a, a thing that people that's a thing for me being born that's and raised. Thing. I love it. <laughs> um, being born and raised in St. Louis, and um, I have two businesses. I have an etiquette school. It's called the Modern School of Manners, and I also have an events company. It's called Slay City Events, and those two things started really because of my passion for entrepreneurship, and in addition to that, I just knew that I wanted to be an entrepreneur. I didn't know what I wanted to be as an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. um, but once I kind of, during COVID, I was doing things. Well, my COVID experience was me sitting with myself, not working for the first time in my life. Baby. Not having a boyfriend or a man the first time in my life. Okay. Um, and just Break like, it down sitting with myself and just mm -hmm. reading and meditating and praying and getting to know God and then and building my relationship with God and then I started the etiquette school and you know you just have that thing when God kind of tells you like you're doing it like this is mm -hmm. your purpose mm -hmm. like everything from me like getting on my hands and knees and praying and being like okay am I doing the right thing and then like a friend calling me a few hours later like hey I had a dream about you last night it was really good. Like you were doing great. And I was like, Oh my God, wow. I, like God slept through you. Like I just asked for a sign and you, my friend were the sign. Um, and as well as the, you know, the events company as well. Um, it also, both of these things also grew out of me growing up, you know, in radio mm -hmm. and in the industry and just always being privy to, adult rooms and adult dinner tables when business is being handled. Mm -hmm. um, and then also being backstage as a kid and just wanting to help, but also understanding like soft skills was the way to get your foot in the door. Um, and it's also something that sometimes we lack. And so that's how it started. That's where we are. I love that. Thank you for sharing all of that, giving us a full view because it's necessary. Um, okay, so I want to ask you this. Um, you mentioned a lot of good things, but first I want to tap into when you were a little girl, Asha, what did you want to be when you grew up and sort of what was the motivating factor behind that? Um, when I was a little, little girl, I wanted to be in show business. Like I wanted to be a model. I wanted to be an actress. Like, I wanted to do all the things. I wanted to be on Disney Channel. Yeah, I tried to like, I did. I wanted to be on that so Raven so bad. Y'all, like, I remember like just being so obsessed. I was like, I just got to talk to her and she has to tell me like some things. I had to be like 11 or 12. And like, I called the like studio, right? I don't even know what number I called, but I thought I was going to talk to Raven. I was determined. <laughs> I love it. I love it. The tenacity, all of it. You, you did what you needed to do or what you thought you needed to do. <laughs> yeah and then like it just grew into me wanting to um you know and then in high school 
I always used to be like, I'm going to be a boss in the, in the, in the entertainment industry. I'm going to be a boss in the music industry. Like I wanted to be my, my dear mentor and auntie Natina Nimini. Like that's, I was like, I'm going to be a boss. I don't care what it is. I don't know what it's going to be, but I'm going to be a boss like her. And, um, you know, it just, that, I mean, that's what I wanted to be. I guess that answers that question. And then I've tried things and, you know, not quite what I thought it was going to be, but, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know. Okay. okay. So because I know you personally, I know that you grew up in the biz. And so you you mentioned earlier that there were soft skills and certain things that, you know, you were able to see that were necessary that not everyone had in the business. And so I wonder if you can just speak to that and how your experience as a youngster helped you to form the business that you have created, as well as sort of like paint the picture of your journey of um, intern to today. Yeah. First, I want to say hi to Minda Hart because I read her book. <laughs> <laughs> Minda is my home girl. Right? <laughs> uh, I read her book. My career coach told me to read her book, and it was when I was in the corporate world. Um, but yeah, soft skills. So I just it it was very apparent to me, like super young, right? That like, oh, people who work well with other people and play well with other people succeed and there's something to being likable and there's something to being charming there's something to having people skills that make you do like just really well and there's something to you may not be great at your job right but like people really like you and yeah. people really want to like rock with you because of that and yeah. so I just I always thought that that was interesting how like who you are as a person can just push you through rooms mm -hmm. and I caught on to that super early um you know I just I always like I've been like the networking queen since I was a, a teenager like I just I knew what to say to people, especially to adults, to get them to like me and get them to respect me. I knew how to, like, also work hard to get them to respect me as well. Um, you know, one story that I like to tell is that when I was living in New York City, um, there was, like, this networking event I really, really wanted to be at, but it was, like, sold out super early. And it was, like, all of these, like, senior people from, like, YouTube and Google, and I really wanted to be in tech. And it was sold out. And, you know, typically people call and are like, hey, can I get in anyway? I was like, no, no, no. I reached out to them and I was like, hey, is there, any, like, do you need help with anything? That's can I help you it. with something? Um, and he was like, actually, I do need help. Thank you for not just asking me to get in. <laughs> right. <laughs> no, that's, that's uh, a major key. Yeah. And, like, I went and I worked the door. And then he was like, you're good. Like, enjoy yourself. And then, like you know, I met people. Um, so there's a statistic also that 85% of one's success has nothing to do with their hard skills and what their education is, and it has everything to do with their soft skills. Um, so okay. yeah, I hope that answers that question. It did. So I want you to talk a little bit more about your experience in the um in like your career path. So with experiences that you have specifically, just because mm -hmm. I think it's interesting to see someone's career path and journey. And it's like, oh, she did have a corporate job or she did have this experience, but she has taken those skill sets and has used that for her business. Yeah. So I'll, I'll take it back to like high school, right? Because that's when I was like, anytime a record rep would come to town, I was like, hey, can I help with whatever you need? Like going to help you get with Khalifa fried chicken, like, helping out with you know sound check whatever it was like I just wanted to do it you know mm -hmm. and so it was really just about me like realizing that like oh I'm good at just getting things done and so let me just keep putting myself in positions where I'm able to help get you know able to help people get things done yeah. and so at first I thought that that was PR right it was like oh you're really good at talking to people you're really good with with people um you should be in PR and so I was like, okay, I'm going to be a publicist. And then I went to college and, you know, I studied PR and I was like, I don't know about this. I wanted to be Olivia Post. So I studied PR and political mm -hmm. science. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
I was like, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be Judy Smith. I love um, it. Yes. <laughs> and then somewhere along the way, I think that the Trump administration really turned me off on mm-hmm. politics. I was like, this does not seem fun for me. Mm-hmm. Like, this doesn't seem, this isn't as sexy as I want it to be. Like, this seems really stressful. Yeah. And so I think I can affect change in other ways. So, but even before then, like, I just always did, like, internships and freelance projects like I mean my internship list game is like crazy from local agencies to you know magazines and helping somebody on their political campaign it's like a grassroots lead Mm -hmm. um and then it got to a point where it was like okay I gotta move out of St. Louis where I'm from because this is not fulfilling me anymore so I want to go to New York something that was just like pushing me to New York and I had always wanted to work for this company called the New York City Economic Development Corporation um I knew that they did really good work and Mm -hmm. I knew that getting my foot in that door was really going to be um beneficial to me you know and so I did a fellowship typically uh, people with like master's degrees get that fellowship and it was in business development and partnerships Mm -hmm. and I ended up getting it and I was over thank you I was over events I was like the events person but like not like planning events but like how does the NYC EDC use events as a strategy to make an appearance and to show that we are um basically open for business like how do we do that so can we put the ceo on andrew sorkin's deal book stage how do we show up at the wall street journal events Mm -hmm. how do we make the new york city you know new york times's events work for us Um, who from our team like should we send somebody to talk about women's issues like how do we make it happen Um, So that was interesting. And then from there, I went to Google to work in events and communications. And I, this is when things kind of turned. So I obsessed over Google for years. Like, (laughs) (laughs) obsessed. Okay, (laughs) like, applied and interviewed and got rejected. And I was like, y'all gonna keep rejecting me? I don't understand. (laughs) I don't get it. I'm great. (laughs) nuts I'm <laughs> um, great yes yes confidence <laughs> like this is nuts like y'all really not gonna let me in this door so I was like at this point now I'm just determined like what is it are y'all what are y'all hiding on the other side of this door that is just mm-hmm. so exclusive and just right. tastes so good that like I just gotta have it and I went and worked at Google and y'all I realized that it was not all that glitters is not gold <laughs> All that Googles is not gold. (laughs) No. And I thought that it would. And it was so heartbreaking. It was so disappointing. And I had this, you know, we see a lot of Black women who have stories about walking out or being fired wrongfully and, you know, all of these things. And it was like, wow, I had that experience. Mm -hmm. Um, And I was heartbroken. And then COVID hit. So I was Mm -hmm. like, well, I'm not working. I'm not. I mean, I had a a hard breakup and then I was like okay so I guess we're just sitting here in the bay by ourselves away from home and we're just gonna have to get to know me and it's like it's me and me and Erica Badu posted this picture um this meme where it was like you can't go outside go inside and I was like well I'm going in I, I'm going in and so that was an amazing like experience of growth for me Mm -hmm. um and then that's when I I was like I've always wanted to start an etiquette school living in the Bay Area and living in New York City I was very close to the venture capital community I was very close to the startup community and a lot of entrepreneurs and in the Bay a lot of black entrepreneurs you know my first weekend there Afrotech was taking place Mm -hmm. and Morgan Devine who's the love Morgan she's from St. Louis She went to the same high school as my mom. So it was like, it felt very like, wow, like this is where I am in my life. And like, Mm -hmm. I need to like do this entrepreneurship thing. So before all of the Google stuff happened, before I even, before I, before anything happened, like I started taking the etiquette certificate. And then like, I just went like, I just 
I just went crazy and just like did it and finished it. And so um, after after that, I went to work at Intel and then I was the communications director at Planned Parenthood. And I was like, okay, corporate is not for me. I keep mm-hmm. trying to do corporate. I keep trying to make corporate work <laughs> and it's not happening. <laughs> it's not for me. <laughs> I'm not happy. No, I like, I'm like, I'm not happy. I don't like this. This is not... This is not, I always thought I would be on the board of Planned Parenthood and not working at Planned Parenthood. Like, Mm -hmm. I'm supposed to be doing other things. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. so, at the same time, at the end of, my business made more money than my yearly salary at Planned Parenthood. And I was like, okay, well, I think I need to leave this job and I need to do something else. And then also working on a tour right now, which we're both working on, um, you know, and it just, it kind of feels like everything is just happening the way it's supposed to happen, right? Where I'm immersed in events, I'm immersed in like, you know, etiquette, I'm immersed in entrepreneurship, mm-hmm. and I'm just, it just, it happened the way it was supposed to happen. Well, thank you for sharing that. That was a perfect segue. Um, and I think, I think it's important that you've had all those experiences and that you can you can take and learn um, from each of them. Um, mm-hmm. And so thank you again for sharing that with us. Um, I want to know, um, what's something that you know now that you wish you would have known sooner? Um, I think that everything is going to be okay. Like, mm-hmm. just keep going and keep trying and just, it's okay. Like, you don't have all the answers and everything's going to be okay. I wish that I would have, like, not been so, like, sad about being at the beginning stages when I was at Mm -hmm. the beginning stages. I Mm -hmm. wish I would have embraced it a little bit more. But I think we all go through that. But I think I would have just, I think I wish I would have just embraced it a little bit more. Yeah. So earlier when you were telling us that you wanted to be a star and you are a star, darling, um, but when you wanted to be like definitely front of house and, you know, be a talent, um, what did you think success was at that point? And then how would you compare it um, to what you think success is today? Has your definition changed at all? And if so, why? Yeah. back then I thought it was just being like, I think success was like, oh, like, you have money, you have nice, a nice car, like, you have all of these material things, like, mm-hmm. everybody around you, like, just seems so at peace because of money, and I think a lot of, you know, I think it was also just, to me, success, and for some reason, like, the industry were always, like, hand in hand, mm-hmm. um, even though, like, I knew that that wasn't true. Like, I have people in my family who are successful at doing other things. <laughs> but, like, for me, and mm-hmm. my version of success, I was like, I got to be a boss in the music industry yep. for my success to make sense. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And now, success is a lot different for me. I think the more you know yourself, the closer you are to success. The more mm-hmm. you're walking in your purpose, the better your, you know, relationship is with whatever it is you choose to believe in. Um, God. Yeah, for me, it's God. But hey, some people, it's a lot. Some people, it's... <laughs> Fair. It's other things. <laughs> Fair. Um, you know, I think that, you know, you are more successful. I think also right now, for me, I'm really focused on, like, how do I create joy and invite joy into my life? And am I taking care of myself? And you know how serious I am about like, yes. all right, like I got to go work out. I got to go read. I got to go journal. Like it's enough. If I don't go to sleep right this second, I'm not going to be any good. Like I think just having like a peace of mind and just like health and a really good quality of life. Like those are things that are successful to me, that, that need success now you know, and still, like, financial stability and everything, too, but it's really just, like, the total package that is success to me. I love that. Thank you. Um, Tell me this. Uh, Along your journey, what are some of the tips um, and or motivators that you use to to keep yourself going? Um, Definitely, like, affirmations. Definitely, 
meditating. What did you say? I am eating up, baby. baby. Oh, I can see. I love it. (laughs) (laughs) But yeah, I mean, affirmations, meditating, visualizing myself in the the positions that I'm in. We both worked on our vision boards, updated our vision boards. Yeah, I have to. I still have to go get the rest of the paper for mine, but almost there. (laughs) Yeah, this is the old one. The new one is not completed. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, well, we still have, okay. Well, we need to be accountability partners on this. Let's do it. Let's do it. Um, I think, yeah, I think meditating, I think, you know, really, like, creating space for you to be your, like, healthiest and, like, best self to keep going, you know? Like, that is so, so important, especially for us for Black folks, for Black women, we neglect ourselves. And I see that, like, as a generational thing, right, where we neglect ourselves. And it's it makes it so much more difficult to, like, move forward. Um, And I think something else is, like, finding your crew of people, like, finding your people. Like, who are the people that you go to that you can rely on that Mm -hmm. support you? Um, that you can vent to, that you can have a good time with, that you can travel with, that you can exchange business ideas with, that you can, who can help push you. Like, I definitely think having a community is so, so important. I agree. I agree. Okay, so not only am I actually the amateur expert, I am actually the owner of Affirmed Armor. And so I am rocking the I'm Enough um, oh, cap um, today. And so I would love for love you, Asha, it. to share with us your go-to affirmation. My go-to affirmation? Um, wow. Right now, it's really the I'm Enough actually it's like (laughs) how appropriate (laughs) look at god (laughs) want to do it it really is i'm enough um because i struggle with that with you know um being insecure and just wondering if i'm enough for all things you know the relationship that i want the the business that i want just everything and I have to remind myself that I am enough and that I deserve I think that's the big one I'm enough and I deserve um actually I'm really like I will preach all day that like I believe in therapy and one thing that my therapist told me to do about a year ago he was like every day I want you to write down why you deserve the life that you want Oh, I love that. And so I was like, okay. And I did. And it was interesting because it was like a little like rewiring, mm-hmm. you know, of some things. And it really is like, I'm enough and I deserve. I love that. Did your answer change daily? Sidebar. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean. Or did it, it change over time? I think like over time right when you learn about yourself and you appreciate yourself more and you're coming and you're letting certain insecurities go Mm -hmm. and you really start to list out why you deserve all the things that you want um you know it 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 definitely does and then as you grow too you know the answer can change that's dope i'm going to incorporate that into my life in in some capacity. You um, so thank you for thank you for sharing that. Um, okay, so we are getting to our very last question, um, and so I'm the amateur expert. I know a little bit about a lot, and so I would love for you to share with me a random fact, a tidbit of information that I can say Asha taught me. And I would love I'm making a special request if it could be something on the etiquette tip right so like Mm. yeah the etiquette tip let's see wow you're putting me on the spot aren't you i am i am there is a way you know you're not supposed to eat your shrimp like with your fingers like there is a way to oh you mean like picking it up yeah you're not supposed to do that you're supposed to like de-shell it with your fork and your knife i can't really demonstrate it right now but like it's supposed to be like a, it's like I, a friend of mine who I saw join. I don't know if she's still here, but I I performed that for her. 
over dinner. She was like, show me how to do show it. Like, how do you even do that? And I showed her. So I'll have to show you. That's, so I guess it's not like the best one. It sounds complicated. But, it sounds um, like you owe us a video. I think you send us, <laughs> you, you, you record yourself doing this. And then we will repost it as this is Asha's <laughs> etiquette tip for this the crew. Is, this is my etiquette tip. I mean, there are like, it's literally so many. It's like pick a pick a topic and I can, um, yeah, and I can tell you. Pick a topic. <laughs> um, I don't, now you're putting me back on the spot. Okay, just any <laughs> random tidbit. Any random tidbit beyond shelling. The, the vent shelling a shrimp. shrimp yeah removing the shell should already be vain and if your shrimp is not vain before you <laughs> <laughs> this interview is going great <laughs> some, more, some other issues um you know how do you introduce do you know how to properly introduce people like say it's me Say it's me, your boss, and your so boss. So my mom says I have no bosses beyond God. So my supervisor, my manager, and my mom. Yes. Yep. <laughs> that okay. Part. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> so how would you introduce them? Um, you and my mother. How would, so say me, say you were introducing, okay, let's go back. Say it's me, you, your mom, your supervisor, and you were introducing your mom to me and your supervisor. How do you properly introduce? I would say, are we all in conversation? I don't know. I feel like I would say, hi, Asha and supervisor. This is my mom, Shelly. Mom, I'd like to introduce you to Asha, my coworker, and Billy Bob, my supervisor my manager is that is that correct so it would actually be here's my supervisor since they're the most senior person right um professionally it would be your supervisor and then it would go down the rank of seniority so i would say mom <laughs> supervisor supervisor asha Yes, it would be mom. Let me introduce you to my supervisor, and I this see. is Asha, my coworker. Yes. Got so it. think about the org chart, right? Yep. You would go from the top of the org chart to the bottom of the org chart, and I then see. once you get to the line, you would start from here and then go. You know, we've Thank seen you. a lot of those lately. <laughs> we <laughs> have, and I appreciate you for sharing that. That's something I would have never really thought about. So that's good to know. I appreciate that. Yes, of course. Look at that. Okay, so now I want to give you the opportunity to share how we can support you. Do you have any projects coming up? Do you have any classes that you are giving? Or how how can we follow up with Asha and support you in the things that you are doing in St. Louis? In St. Louis. um, Follow me on Instagram at Slay City. And also sign up for an etiquette course. I teach people um, business etiquette, social etiquette, dining etiquette, and teach kids, teenagers, adults. If you have a corporation uh, that you support, then we can do a corporate class um, or a corporate workshop. Love those. Or, you know, you are in education, I can do a workshop for students. Um, And then events is a little different because I do, my focus is on corporate, nonprofit, and community events. So, if you are the decision maker for one of those, then feel free to reach out to me or just follow me on Instagram to watch um, all the food that I eat and the outfits that I wear in <laughs> yes, content. <laughs> yes, yeah. content. Yes, all the things. Yes. Well, Asha, I want to thank you again for being our guest today. I want y'all to go follow Asha. I have dropped her um her social media name in the chat um i have all her information so it will be in the show notes please go back and watch it if you're just catching us 
I should drop some good gems and it was great conversation and we will see you next week. If you are interested in being on the show or know someone who would be a good candidate, please tell them to hit me up and we will see y'all soon. Hey, Miami. Miami, we've got to get you on the show, girl. Okay. All right. Have a talk Tuesday. We will see you next week. Be blessed. Be kind to yourself. Peace out. My mom said you're a beautiful person with a great spirit. Oh, thank you, Mom. <laughs> I love Ashley. She's amazing. Hi, Darcy. Okay. All right. Thank you for having me. <laughs> of course. I will see you on Zoom tomorrow. <laughs> see you on Zoom tomorrow. Bye. Bye.